like an oil tsunami that came in and it overwhelmed us and then the wave went back, okay? What did it leave behind? All the plans that we had for this to last a long time, okay, so now it's been cut short. We started noticing the, the influx of people coming in uh, between 2009 and 2010. There were a lot of what they call landmen here looking at the records of people who owned properties so they could begin doing the lease agreements for them to start drilling the oil wells. The Eagle Ford Shale is a rock formation. It runs about 400 miles in Texas, and it's basically a huge oil and gas field. It wasn't until shale drilling came along that they were able to tap into it. So the first well was in late 2008, and it just took off very rapidly from there. Gas prices fell because they basically oversupplied the market. They were so successful at it that prices crashed and have stayed down um, for years now. It's a small, mostly poor region. So you did not have infrastructure in these towns to be able to support this kind of workforce. We went from two RV parks in the county to over 70 RV parks just to house the temporary workers we, that were here. And that's how the man camps got started. We started seeing these mobile units come in, like housing, set up in areas, and that's where they started bringing in the workers because we could not accommodate the housing needs. We were able to accommodate 198 guests. Back in 2012, we basically had every room filled. Right now, we probably have 21 guests. You know, we probably had like 100 employees. Well, now we have maybe five, I mean, it will be back. You know, so you just don't say, okay, if we don't get 50 guests next week, we're shutting the doors, you know. Uh, what we do is, okay, what can we do to reduce our cost to sustain ourselves for another year, uh, whatever the case may be. At the beginning of 2015, there was more than 200 drilling rigs. Right now it's at 29. Texas last year had about 72,000 oil and gas workers laid off, and this year they're expecting another maybe 40,000 who lose their jobs. The portion of work that we're working on right now is winding down. So it's, uh, we could be out of work very shortly, in a few weeks. Determination in the good Lord above and my health, I've survived this long. I'll figure something out. You know, you're caught up in basically a world economy and a world, a, a world commodity. U.S., we are basically the new player that has added, you know, several million barrels per day to world production. There's so much of an oversupply on the world market right now. Nobody really wants the oil. A lot of what you hear is that it'll, when it comes back, it'll never have that same feeling again. That there was a feeling in South Texas for a few years, it just seemed like money was falling from the sky, people were getting rich overnight. It may never be at that same kind of gold rush, frenzied level again. The Lord giveth and he taketh away. Don't squander, be good stewards of your money. And I think this is where, where um, the lesson has to be learned. It hasn't been learned yet. This is like the third cycle in my lifetime, where it's bottomed out and come back, bottomed out and come back. And it will recover from this, because we still are predominantly an oil and gas operated world.